Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today I'm going to be playing through Lycanthorn, a fairly short little GZ Doom total conversion. Though, as I mentioned before, this is actually a total conversion that runs from Shrine rather than the Doom 2 WAD, and I actually didn't realize this is also by Scumhead who made Shrine, so it makes sense that he's using a mod of a mod. But yeah, this looks pretty cool. It's very Castlevania inspired. It's eight levels, and you are a werewolf lady who is hunting a vampire. Also, I should mention that I did finish Shrine after doing that first impressions, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. It definitely gets better as you get further into it. Alright, so it's got the similar NES kind of style to Shrine. And already we've got a very Castlevania jam. Oh yeah, this is good. I just wanted to, I always feel like I have to check this to see what the ideal HUD is. Alright, left click to slice your foes. So I think this is the only main weapon we get, but similar to Castlevania, we get sub-weapons. That's probably hell. We didn't even have to break a wall open to find that wall meat. Alright. So these are souls, which are the ammo for your sub-weapons. Never really sure how they explained that in Castlevania. Why there are hearts inside of candles that give you the ability to throw knives. I like how they have the straight up like NES deaths too, where they just disappear and make a chunky sound. So I guess we'll just leave the health here. I really like this track. I wonder if this is entirely new or if this is actually licensed, because it turned out one of those tracks in the Shrine video was copyrighted by... it was just used from somewhere else. Alright, so now we can throw knives. So far these guys are not very threatening. Also, I just realized there was no difficulty selection. I think this came out after Shrine, but before Shrine 2. But it's fairly recent. This came out like three months ago. And then the sequel came out like a month ago, so he made these pretty close together. Even though the sequel is more of a later Castlevania style. Oh. Uh. I think that was the level boss. It says there's one secret. But I didn't really see anything that looked like it would be a secret. And we got the health refill that you get at the end of a Castlevania level. But we're already at full health, so can't even pick it up. And I guess this is Rain right here, our werewolf lady. So yeah, you can see that this is going to be a pretty short playthrough. I mean, you can also see that by the time on the video, but... Having not played this, I can say that it feels pretty short. My name is Rain, and I am a vampire hunter. Though my werewolf blood makes me shunned by society, it is my duty to slay the wicked creatures of the vampire menace. I have received word from the college that a great tower has been erected on a small island off the coast of Morvania. To me, this could mean only one thing. A powerful vampire has made their home here. So yeah, this is definitely simpler than Shrine, but I think this was made to be fairly simple, because the original Castlevania, like, Castlevania 1, very simple game. Castlevania 2, not so much. Okay, we got some Axe Knights. Wow, that did so much damage. 
<laughs> All right. Don't fuck with the Axe Knights, because they do, like, 20 damage per axe. They still only take one hit, though. More wall meat. Oh, okay, so the secret was just the meat. I just didn't touch it. I don't know why I just threw a dagger at the wall. Yeah, ducked out of the way. Key. Some big chunky gravestones. It is always funny when you have these kind of NES style projects done in first person because they keep the weird proportions that these things have in the original games. Where it's like, it doesn't look so weird when you're playing from a side scroller or a top down view, but then made into first person, you're like, oh wow, these things are actually really big compared to you. Okay. I suppose I don't want to waste my daggers on these non-ranged enemies. Need a red key now. Another one of these things. That looks like a boss. Okay, you have to actually go in the boss room to get the boss music. Also like Castlevania bosses, they don't take very many hits. Alright, that's Castle Grave. Castle Plaza. Oh, this is also a jam. So I suppose that means the only source of healing is the orb you get from being the boss and whatever wall meat is in a level. And it looks like there's only one per level based on the number of secrets on the map. We already found the knives. You don't have to tell me again. Are we gonna find another weapon in this one? He's too manic, I can't hit him. All right, that was a death pit. These guys seem to try and flank you when they're in a group like that. Make sure the meat isn't up there. Are you going to come back out or? in there. 
Shit. Uh, I second guess myself again. I do that way too much with platforming. Where I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna make it, so I better start walking backwards, and then I walk off the edge. This axe does have a pretty good wide swing, though. And I just noticed that picking up those knives doesn't even increase your ammo, so there's no point. I'm making a save here just so we don't keep doing that same thing again and again. Alright, let's just go for it. I'm gonna kinda go diagonally so I just hit the corner of the wall. I took long enough that the music actually wound down before I got- Oh, jeez, what are you? Dead is what you are. No meat tucked away. Yeah, these are like, uh, vampire ladies? Shooting rings at me? Or is that a bubble? You know, this castle doesn't look so impressive out here. <laughs> Pretty sure that would have been a death pit as well. Shrine didn't really have much in the way of death pits. Like, there was one that was a void that would kill you if you fell off, but otherwise, most of them, when you fell in the water, would give you a staircase to get back out. Okay, turns out there's friendly fire. I didn't know that. Another key. No wait, we already have this key. We need another key. Ouch. Oh, that was 20 damage. <laughs> really gonna need to find that meat before we fight the boss. Okay, here's a blue key. I was gonna say silver key, but blue key, but we need a red key, so clearly there's going to be another door behind that door. Wow, the axe was not enough to kill him. He took damage from- there we go. All right, I've got 12 health. I hope the boss is not back here. Yep, that looks like a boss to me. <laughs> okay, the secrets say that there's still a secret somewhere, so let's double back for a sec. Nothing behind this pillar. can't be too many places to hide a chicken. Please don't tell me it's in here, like, on a weird little ledge below. Right. Good thing I saved, because... <laughs> huh. Yeah, I don't know where it would be. Like, there's not a lot of places to hide stuff in this level.
Ah, there we go. Behind the waterfall, of course. Okay, so we got some kind of big fish beastie out here. Some fish crab lady. Oh no, I'm stuck behind the torch. Wasn't sure how viable it would be to hit them with the axe, but the hitbox is pretty big. All right, that's Castle Plaza. Outer Hamlet. So we're halfway now. Oh, there's the castle. We were just in like a bridge or something before. Maybe this island is just covered in castle-y bits. This looks like another room of death bits. Ow, shit. Uh, what are these? Little ghosty sperms. The just keep swinging strategy actually worked pretty well there. I thought there might be wall meat behind there. I like how I'm still calling it wall meat, even though it's very clearly not hidden in a wall. But that's just the Castlevania way. There it is. And I actually do need it. That we haven't found another sub weapon yet. Even the original Castlevania had like five of them. Well, we had the knife, the axe, the cross, the holy water, the stopwatch, and I think that's it. Okay, we're actually full up on ammo now. 20 doesn't seem like a lot, but most enemies seem to die in about five knives, so... Or, I guess, most stronger enemies. Sprinting through a room like this has got to be really bad for the YouTube bitrate. <laughs> but I'm hoping at this point that I've got so much overkill bits that... It's not just turning into a blurry mess. I mean, if I can only hold 20 ammo, then I might as well be using it more often. What's behind the church door? Uh, okay. Definitely an over-dependence, though, I think, for Scumhead using projectiles. Because it's like everything has projectiles. Not only that, but they share the same kinds of projectiles. Snow Ravine. Alright. Uh, we don't need any more souls right now. So maybe we can actually get a new weapon now that we're almost done? That 
that right there is a very Castlevania sound. That da 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 da. I can't believe I just got fucking owned by that knight. He got like four hits in on me. Are those supposed to be like snow witches or something, those vampire ladies? Hello. He's uh, a little bit stuck. I suppose that is one of the problems with having melee enemies instead of projectile enemies. Okay, so we got the yellow key, which means we're gonna have to come back here with the red key. Something I'm actually curious about, because I've never really seen anything that goes against it. Is it even possible to do a Doom level that has more than three keys in it? Because even stuff like Ashes, you know, the more open-world Ashes afterglow, seems to still be using the three-key structure, so I'm wondering if that's just like a hard-coded limitation. Because I think a lot of the other ones that don't have that are the ones that have their own pseudo-inventory system, similar to like Duke Nukem. So I suppose anyone who's more familiar with Doom modding from the technical side could probably answer that. Full up on ammo, almost at full health, and we have all the keys. Still no sign of meat though. There it is. There's a very obvious hidden door. What's our boss this time? Oh, okay, it's a snowman with uh, a mouth in his chest. That one Devil May Cry 5 boss feeds snow into his chest and spits out snowballs instead of trash. Circle strafing does seem to be the name of the game, but that that's always been a Doom thing. The armory. There's gotta be a new weapon in here, right? Let's see, this is map six, so yeah, we're two more levels after this. And we're not even, like, 20 minutes into the video. Okay, that's a lot of nights. Every one of you gets a knife. This is my Knives for Knights charity. Making sure that there's a knife for every knight. Okay, these ones are just decorative armor. They had me going there for a sec. Are they are they all rotating to face me? No, that's just the sprite rotating. A lot of knights in the armory. I suppose that makes some degree of sense.
I like to think that these vampires are already, like, attempting to be seductive. They're just wearing a house coat that they didn't feel like tying up. Like, whatever, you're coming into my castle, I'm not gonna get fucking dressed up for you. Oop, almost just ran into the lava. Because the wall textures were kind of blending in, I didn't see the gap. What the hell's that? Oh, it's one of those little wiggly things. I don't know if we can get back up here. That looks like a new weapon. Oh, this thing's too fast to hit with a knife, but, like, I don't want it to knock me off the ledge. You found the Tesla coil. Press R to fire. I mean, it's nice that it doesn't just replace your existing weapon. As it would in Castlevania, where you can only have one sub-weapon at a time. And thus, you pretty much always just kept the best one and never switched it. Ooh, that was close. I'm gonna go back and get that health now. Looks tricky, but it's really easy to go slow, as long as you're not holding shift and going 30 miles an hour, which I believe is what was calculated as being the Doom Guy's normal speed when you're sprinting. It's about 32 miles an hour. Okay, we need to test out our Tesla coil. Okay, it just shoots a spread of projectiles. And I think it uses a bunch of ammo. Yeah, it uses three, but it looks like it's better for taking out a group of enemies. Or hitting a boss multiple times, probably. Like this guy. Hmm. Definitely a limitation that the boss door doesn't close behind you. <laughs> okay, now I can't even get past him, so I can't even fight him normally. His hitbox is just too wide. Does he not actually have a melee attack? Okay. When he swings his sword, the projectiles come out. I was like, he should be just smacking the shit out of me with his big sword. So we did actually find a new weapon in the armory. And I missed one of the enemies because it was that little wiggler that was underneath. also very Castlevania sound. Man, Castlevania games really do have great music for most of them. All the way back to the first one. That's one thing that seemed like it stayed pretty consistent through the series until they just made them into a generic third-person action game for the last ones before the death of Castlevania along with all of other Konami's properties. So many good games lost to being owned by a shitty company. Not only that, but a shitty company that is not even willing to let go of those properties. They would rather that they sit and rot than the chance that somebody else might make money off of them if they sold them. But it's like, if you're not making games, then you're not competing with people in the game space anymore. So... I don't know. You'd think they'd at least license them out to third parties. Oh, this is not great. This is a slime pit with conveyor belts and a wizard shooting at me. I don't know if this slime hurts. It doesn't seem to, but I bet it would kill me if I fell down there. Ooh, ooh. I wasn't expecting
expecting that. I was expecting just regular projectiles again. Uh oh. Um. Yeah, I think uh, I broke the door. I don't think it was supposed to let me out, but because I didn't go through it. All right, well. Let's start over. So we know that we have to rush through that door once it opens. I guess this is the boss rush level. I don't think I can really use the test the coil to hit this guy because most of the projectiles are gonna hit the wall if I do. Why did that one go so high? <laughs> See, the problem with taking this is I can't get out of the way of those shots. Alright, let's rush through here. Yeah, that door just stops working, so there's no going back. Which is kind of what the other one should have done. Well, that's a little trippy to look at. Circular conveyor belt. Alright. That's a little shitty. A conveyor belt going the wrong way that you have to run up and jump off in an instant death pit. But very Castlevania. <laughs> the original Castlevania games had a lot of really shitty spots that were just meant to kill you. Back when NES design was very short games that were very hard so that you would get lots of playtime out of them by sucking. All right, well, we'll save before we get there. Getting faster each time I do this because I don't want to take so much time. I didn't see a way to avoid that. I mean, I don't really need help. I'm not taking too much damage. Save here. So this is a pretty neat little project. It's just a shame that it seems a little simple, but like I said with Shrine, the second game of this also seems to address the simplicity because it plays more like a older Castlevania game where you can go back and forth between levels as you unlock stuff. Damn, how am I slipping off the side when it's not even the direction the conveyor belt goes? Fine, I'll just do a regular little jump. So yeah, we have to run diagonally and leap that gap. There we go. Also, saves, so I don't have to do that again. Now we got two of these guys, okay. This is 
still map seven, right? Yeah, so there's still one more after this. So it's not like there's gonna be a final boss here. Well, that's new though. It's uh, it's basically death. It's death from Castlevania. Pretty uh, mellow death though. He's only throwing one. Ooh, okay, that's a big old green orb. That's concerning. Now he's starting to speed up on throwing more. I'm out of ammo. Okay. I was like, how do I get out of this wall? Final level. Castle Peak. Is this just going to be a boss, or is this going to be a whole level before that? Looks like we're going to fight more bosses on the way. This guy has such a big hitbox. I can't get past him. It does make it so that you can't just strafe around him, though. This is so tedious. I have to walk back and forth from each little alcove. You know, Castlevania also did have, like, a five-heart drop, so it would have been nice to just give me a few of those here. I make an earlier boss harder. How about we just have two of them every time? Ooh, yeah, axe to the face. Oh no, I didn't save after picking up all those souls. Maybe we just skip them and hope that uh, there's more later. So yeah, the enemies do seem to have a little trouble dealing with your melee. <laughs> I'm only gonna get the ones on one side. That way we're not doing this for <laughs> five minutes straight. Boys are in a little too much of a hurry. You got stuck on each other. So I think now that we've heard all the level music, I can still say that the first level had the best jam of the ones in here. I cannot believe how much these axes hurt. But then, in the original Castlevania, you could take, like, four hits? That's all you had on a health bar? Okay. Thankfully, we have a heal before the boss. We don't have to do anything else to get it. Are you the vampire that we came here to slay? Old Countess Knife Hands? I will say that Shrine had some bosses with quite a few attacks, but most of the bosses in this seem to have only one. Is that it? Are you slain? Oh no, I... Oh, okay. 
fucking annihilated. Okay, so she got a, a shitty form, and then she's got a giant form. I wasn't sure if there was going to be, like, a text scroll there. I suppose this is probably enough titty to get you banned from Twitch, since... According to the ruling, it's totally fine to have nudity in any game, you know, like Cyberpunk or whatever. But if you have nudity in any mod, even if it's not the point of the mod, that's still an instant ban. Such bullshit. Thankfully, I'm not on Twitch, so I don't have to deal with their cancer. This is a good weird boss design, though, looking at it. I mean, yes, it, it does kind of have a laser ball shooting vagina for a mouth. But aside from that, it's got two weird faces. It's got a mantis lady coming out of the top. Circle strafing is still a little too effective. I feel like it needs a shockwave attack to keep you from just doing this. Like, you know, it fires at you a couple times and then blasts out a shockwave so you have to back up. I can keep this up all day. I don't know how much life you have. There's that big green ball, but even that doesn't seem to have a good shot at hitting me. I like that it seems like she's trying to swipe at me with her little arms, but she can't reach. Like, she's too high up. Oh. And that is the end of the vampire Camilla. Or was it Carmilla? Alright. Well, let's see ya, Castle Morvania. Or I guess we're off the coast of Morvania, so... That's not actually the name of the castle. Castle Lycanthorn. So yeah, that was about half an hour to finish that. It was fun, but very basic. Carmilla, the dreadful queen of Rensylvania Castle. Okay, so it does have... Wait, Rensilva Castle is dead. Her wretched spawn is slain, and the island is safe. I clean the blood off my blade and step down the gothic stairway. Though she is slain, I can't help but feel the demonic claws of the vampire nobility bearing down on my heart. There are many more like Carmilla out there, and it will be my duty to stop them. Thank you for playing Lycanthorn. The end. So yeah, like I was saying, it was good, but it was pretty basic. But for a short mod like this, that's fine. It is very true to the kind of game that it is inspired by. And I am looking forward to doing a first impressions on Lycanthorn 2, as well as Shrine 2, and Vomitorium, as I said. So we still got three more scumhead games to look at. But yeah, I don't think I'll do a full playthrough of the second one, because it's a fair bit longer. But I enjoyed doing this little one here, and I hope I will see you folks for some more Scumhead Total Conversions next time.